Welcome back and now to our interview segment. In December last year, President Mohamed Buhari said the government is edging forward in promoting sustainable development by creating a digital application, IMAC, that enables citizens to monitor and evaluate capital projects in real time. IMAC is an application that provides unimpeded access to information on stakeholders, including contract terms and contractors. The president said the innovation would have to forestall the practice of abandoning projects as all stakeholders such as the communities, civil society organizations, contractors, ministries, departments and agencies, that is MDAs and citizens would continually interact one on one on the platform. I have joining me right now project manager of IMAC, Ose Iyoke, to look at citizens engagement in budgeting tracking. Many thanks for joining me, Ose. Yes, it's good to be here, Justin. All right, so it's been like um, five months. IMAC application was launched sometime in December uh, 2022 by President Mohamed Buhari. Can you tell us more about the application and the stakeholders that are involved? Okay. So um, IMAC enables every citizen to be able to discover government projects around them, um, give feedback on this project, and be able to engage with the ministry and uh, the contractors implementing the project. And um, the IMAC system has four major stakeholders, the governing body, which is the federal government and its agencies that own the projects. Um, IMAC also has the contractors, that's a dashboard for the contractors who are implementing the project to be able to give project updates. And IMAC has a platform for citizens and CSOs to be able to review government projects, um, let the government know the progress of these projects. So yeah, the citizens and CSOs are able to like service underserved um, communities. So those are the main stakeholders on IMAC. Just uh, mentioned something. Uh, I just want you to react to that. The president said um, the IMAC is the innovation that would help to forestall the practice of abandoning projects as all stakeholders would be directly uh, interacting on one platform. So far, how has that been in terms of um, the interactions on that particular platform? Yes, yeah, so, so far it's been, it's been fairly good. One is that I would like to applaud the uh, Governments, which is the Ministry of Finance, Budget and National Planning, they have been very, very uh, critical to making this a success. Um, they have been able to upload a lot of project information in terms of like images, project status, and pictures. And citizens, on the other hand, have been getting engaged or reaching out on how they can get engaged. So I would say it's it's fairly good. That's the reaction and the engagement on IMAC, but definitely it could be better. Are the feedbacks that you have gotten so far from the interactions that have uh, or maybe the traffic that you have seen on that particular platform yes so uh, and the feedback shows us um, the need for citizens to get involved because a lot of times people do not understand um, government processes or why projects take too long or why projects are not abandoned in the first place so you get people asking questions like okay we have a $160 billion road, why is um, only $1 billion or $500 million, sorry, $16 billion road, why is only $300 million um, appropriated in this year? So we get people asking questions, trying to understand oh, who is in charge of this project, who oh, is a constituency project, um, who is my House of Reps member? So um, a lot of, yes, we're getting, we're getting people asking the right questions, and we're also tr getting the ministries in charge, being able to reply to those questions. Fine. It's been, like I said, it's been five months uh, the, since the presidential launch until now. You know, aside from the feedbacks that you have gotten and the people actually uh, showing interest in um, government project, uh, would you really say in any way or how has it been able to, you know, reduce um, the issue of um, abandoning, uh, abandonment of project that we have had? The president actually mentioned that during the launch. Yes, so... Um it's getting citizens more involved and letting citizens have ownership. So before you hear, um, citizens mostly get involved when it's time for like politics or election cycles, which happens once in four years. But now people are able to get involved on a day-to-day -day basis. So I see a road in front of me 
that's in front of my street and I'm able to check the app, just go, oh, what are the projects around me? And then I see um, is this road is being done by this ministry. It's meant to start this date and this date. I, um, because I'm a very, very major stakeholder, I want to see the road in front of me, Tad. I get involved and I'm able to ask questions. I follow up. Now I'm in the knowledge of it. But like before, a lot of people didn't know. They might see a road and say, oh, is government doing it? They might even make assumptions, or is the state government or is the... Um, or is the local government. But now we're able to give them the information, they know who the contractor is, and they're able to get involved. And um, we haven't seen um, massive fruits of labor yet because it's still a short period of time. But we believe that over time, over a longer period of time, we'll be able to see, because of this involvement by citizens, um, there will be more accountability in the system. Okay, now, so what uh, is next for uh, IMAC uh, after this um, five months? Uh, what's the next line of um, action or... Uh, process for you guys soon? Yes, so right now we are trying to push for citizens' engagement. We have um, ways that we are trying to come up to incentivize citizens because um, a lot of times people are not, people don't have like so much faith in the system. So we're trying to find incentives, we're educating people, trying to find incentives for them to review projects and give their feedback. I'm also working with the ministries who have been quite collaborative in being able to respond to these citizens and provide um, relevant data. So from now till let's say the next six months, what we're going to be doing, we have a bounty program where we get to give people points or some small cash to be able to review projects or give project data. So we think that will form some form of incentive for people to get involved. But um, other than that, we're also working hand to hand with ministries and also CSOs to be able to review projects and ministries to be able to update project data and um, reply to citizens' queries. So for the next six months or till the end of the year, I'll say a lot of our focus is citizens' engagement. Some other focus will be also partnering with the states because right now we're partnering with, with the federal government, but a lot of projects that affect the people are state government projects. So we're also working to get state government on board on IMAC to um, advertise their project and have better monitoring evaluation insights. All right, uh, Ose, as we uh, let you go now, I still need to understand why um, Nigerians have not really been so, so, so well involved when it comes to uh, monitoring and, of course, uh, tracking the government um, project and government, uh, the project that on government's budget. Why is it important that we get involved? I know uh, sometime last week or so, you were at a workshop uh, specifically uh, with the young people and uh, the whole essence was to carry young people along. But over time, we have found out that Nigerians are not really so involved directly when it comes to monitoring of a um, project in the national budget. Yes, so are you asking why aren't citizens involved? Just to yes, get that mean, why correct. citizens should be involved and why have they not been involved over time? Yes, so um, a big reason why citizens, why we believe citizens haven't been involved is one, maybe lack of trust. Maybe over time, um, citizens have had a certain view of the government and whatever, like, they don't even want to get involved. But over time, since 2020, and we found people getting more involved in politics, voting, and governance. And it's a good trend, especially like the turnout in the last election and the youth movement. So we believe that there's, a, there's an upward trend of people getting more involved. And it's very critical because we need to take ownership. This is our taxes. Government money belongs to the people. So um, if there's a road being in front of you, you need to be able to have that ownership to know, okay, who is doing this road and when is it being completed? Because like I said earlier, politics is about eight months, once in four years, but governance happens every day. After you elect people or your people or your person doesn't win, how can you make sure that the, the next person is doing the things that he should or she should? All right, thank you so, so much. Um, the, the reason... Yo, yo, go ahead. Right, thank I, you I thought much. you were done. Go ahead. Just conclude with your thoughts. Yes, yeah, so um, the main reason why citizens should get involved is because governance happens every day. We can't just stay in, focus our energy on politics. We have to keep the people that we elected accountable. All 
All right, thank you so much. Uh, we have been speaking with um, Osel. Okay, uh, we'll be looking at uh, budget tracking in Nigeria and, of course, uh, the need for citizens' involvement and participation. And, of course, we have been evaluating IMAC uh, since the past five months. It was launched by President Mohamed Buhari. We do appreciate your time, Osel. Thank you very much, Justin. All right, away from budget tracking, we'll move on next now to aviation matters. Now, the federal government has explained why it is approving contract worth billions of naira with less than 20 days to change power. Minister of Transportation Maazo Sambo said the current administration would continue to perform its duties until May the 28th as constitutionally required. Sambo spoke with State House correspondent after the weekly Federal Executive Council meeting on Wednesday. The council approved 449.9 million there for the engagement of consultants for the development of a master plan for 17 airports. Approved. Uh... 449.9 million for the engagement of consultants for the development of airport master plan for 17 airports in Nigeria. Approval was also given for the award for the contract for the remediation of newly identified hydrocarbon impacted sites uh, along the shoreline of Ogoni land. And this is for about 107 billion naira. It's a big one indeed. These things, we, we, we do not control the process, but when it's completed and we're still in office, we're duty bound to bring these uh, uh, memos to council, uh, for council to, to approve. Government is a continuum. Uh, there are still a lot of memos, I can assure you, a lot of contracts that will not see the light of day in, uh, in the next one week. We have continued since 2015 to implement projects and uh, we are confident that the incoming administration will do this. All right, as we go on the show, are you having challenges getting your international passport as a result of what uh, they tell you at the office, mainly scarcity? of booklets. Well, here is some explanation for you. The Nigerian Immigration Service and the firm contracted by the federal government for the production of Nigerian passport, Iris Smart Technologies Limited, have blamed the Central Bank of Nigeria's foreign exchange policy for the scarcity of booklets. They made the allegation when they both appeared before the House of Representatives ad hoc committee investigating the proposed domestication and processing of Nigerian international passport. The firm also accused the Nigerian security printing and meeting company PLC of sabotaging its efforts after failing to secure the contract for the production of the passport. I'll leave you with details of that report. I am Justin Akadonye, Business Insight returns again tomorrow. Bye for now. Since 2015, thousands of Nigerians in the diaspora and at home have applied, paid and been captured, but are yet to issue their international passport booklets. The House is concerned about the ugly development of why Nigeria does not produce its own passport booklets despite owning a maintenance and printing company. The firm contracted for the production of the passports to the committee that prior to the engagement by the government, the country had a shabby passport administration. The government discarded those booklets because they were substandard and didn't meet ICAO standards and then decided to have an international tender for the production and embedding of chips. The IRIS bid was found to be technically competent and price competitive. So out of that international bid, the issue was given, the award was given to IRIS to produce the passports. The other committee also agreed with the Comptroller General of the Nigerian Immigration Service, Idris Jerry, at its investigative hearing. Idris decried that NIS does not have access to the forex it generated while attributing the shortage of booklets to its unavailability by the CBN to aid production outside the country. Well, when the contract was signed, there was a caveat that ISTN should set up a factory in Nigeria to produce booklets. I have document to submit to this committee. Have they not produced? Two, production of uh, Nigerian e-passport booklets are heavily dependent on foreign exchange. Out of the seven components that make up passport booklets, are sold in foreign markets. 
where booklet assemblage and production are done in Malaysia. The other committee is expected to meet with the CBN on issues raised as more Nigerians continue to apply for their passports, comfortable in the knowledge that they may not get it anytime soon.